Right, good morning everyone. Now, unfortunately, yesterday I did film what I've done so far and um, part two, what I thought I'd filmed and as I'd gone to switch the camera on, it hadn't quite caught it so I thought it had come on and it hadn't. So I was a little bit miffed at that. So today, what I'm going to do first is to just talk through what I've done. I did use some paint. Now, actually, I didn't use the paint for the blue. This was what I was painting the other day. And um, it's just water and paint that was left in the pot, you know, when you wash your brush. But it was right colour for what I needed. And then I did use some uh, sap green to do this section. And that has dried. Um, I did take that little bit of lace... Uh, colour it in a little bit. It's not finished by far. I've got a lot of work to do on it yet. Um, I did let it drip into here as well to change the colour of that. I put some birds on which I'm going to be embroidered on as well. That's not there. And then I did start and do um, this. Now this, this, um, it's couched on and all it is is a ribbon. And I knot the end, seal it with the lighter. And then I twist it, stitch that on, and you're just couching it on with a stitch every now and again. And then you knot the other end when you're finished. So that's another thing you can do. I will be finishing this off. I did, uh, these were my felts. Um, so they'll be, a, I'm going to embroider them. I just wanted to know where, how it looked and finish the rock. That one's couching down a little bit more. These won't colour in those little flowers because unfortunately the green turned them, the little cream flowers, uh, green as well. But I'm not fussed about that. I'm not fussed about any of it whatsoever. Um, So yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with that so far. I might just put the other corner in because I like those, the French knots. So what I'm going to do um, at the moment, I'm because I've got something to do, so I'm not going to be able to do this today just yet. But like you say, when it's done, that will fit over that and then that will be put onto there. And then it'll be braids inside to cover it. But that's what it's going to look like. And it's going to be good. I like that. I'm quite thrilled with it, actually. So, yeah. I will continue with that. I'm going to put that there because that's the next bit I'm going to show you when I do it. Now, I just wanted to share with you some other bits and pieces. When you're doing, like, a patchwork, and this is just a sample, a really quick sample, you can mix and match all your colours. So, I like, I chose reds for this, pinks and reds and cream and obviously I've just quickly hand stitched that on but you only the smallest of pieces like if I wanted to turn that into a, a little book you know a little pin book like that and tidy it all up and just put some pins in it they're easy to do so just any scrap that you have of any material Try and put them in a bag and colour coordinate them so that, like, lots of these are, I mean, there's a brown in there, yes, but I've got pinks. Various fabrics, see? I've got a little bit of red lace, um, some red cotton, um, flowered cotton. Put all of those in a bag and as you collect your um, trimmings and that, you only need small pieces. You don't need anything huge. And again, as for these type of things, keep all your cut-offs. Because look, you know, that can actually cut, uh, be used somewhere on one of these projects. See that bit? So you could stitch it on somewhere. Right. 
I might want to just put that there and then add a couple of these, you know, somewhere. And then I can cut these up as well. I mean, cut off what's not any good, obviously. But I could use those individually or as a little corner piece. You know, it's up to you what you do. Don't waste anything. It's really, really... It helps a landfill as well, doesn't it? Let's be honest. So, that's fabrics. Now, according, regarding um, threads. So, this is your tapestry wool. So, you can use that on them as well. Uh, we've, this is the last one we sold out of all that, unfortunately. Uh I'm just going to share with you this first before I talk about the threads because I want to get this in. Now, there's... On any piece that you make... Where's that thing gone? Where has it gone? My little patch. So on my little patch here, right, there's various little things that you can... Various stitches. Now, I've basically just stitched that on. Just ignore that because I can pick that and take it off. But this is um, a needle point stitch and all it is is you go from top to bottom and then you um, basically couch it down. So that's a needle point. You've got the leaf stitch, you've got the fishbone stitch, you've got the feather stitch. I'm going to say I didn't even cross it over, did I? Um, the lock stitch, that's like a blanket stitch. The weaving stitch. And even a Scottish thistle, you can put those on. And they are so easy to do. So I'm going to show you how to do this one, the thistle, because it looks hard and people go, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. So what you got is bits like this. So you start off with the string. So I'm just going to show you the string that I've actually used. You do have this in your kits, I have to say, and I've put plenty in for you. So you take your um, string, and this is on here with two twists, like that. So you want as many strands as you can um, muster. So I'm going to cut this in half, because I don't need a lot, right? And then you fold that back. You can tie that if you want to uh, tie it. And where's my little wire? Here's my little wire. So all I'm going to do is tie mine with a little bit of wire. But it's going to hold it so that I can play around with what I'm doing. So I'm just going to wrap that around like that. Take that. Get that in the middle. Give it a twist. Right. And then we clip that off. Don't waste that bit, but that little bit can go. Alright, so we've got that. Then you take your comb, because you've untwisted it, and we're just going to brush it. Like that. Then you can bring it all together. So you do that. Make sure that wire is bent in. Okay, and then, oh, needle and thread. That's not going to be enough. Wait a minute, I'm going to use this one. Just, obviously you'll do it the colour you need it. Like a green base or something like that. Where's my needles, girls? Boys? That's it. Not the end. That wasn't a very good knot, was it? There we go. So, now I'm just going to make sure that mine's evenish. There we go. Get rid of the rubbish. So, you've got your thistle. And I'm just going to do it underneath this one. So, first of all, what I do is I put my stitch in. 
and I'll do that a couple of times and then come back up oh. right just bring that up like that then I'm going to put my thistle flower I'm going to lay it across like that just hang that over and couch that in that's it just couch that down like that so it's stuck and then you just go over it and over it and over it until you've got your little section at the bottom now I sometimes go through it as well because that helps couch it down to the fabric and you can go back and forth either way doesn't matter and you make the thistle head I've not put as much on that one as I have that one And that's how you do it. So I'm just going to see if I can speed this up a little bit. It's just basically going side to side. See, and you just couch it in. And that way you've got a little thistle. But obviously you'll do these two different colours. And that's that. I'm just going to trim that one off. But like I say, there are lots and lots and lots of different um, stitches that you can do and flowers. So basically, it's just... I do a section like that if I'm doing it on a project. And then I can take off as much as I need. But yeah, they do look nice. They do look pretty. And you can cut them as short or as long as you want. But that's the idea of doing it. It's really good idea to have a sheet and practice your stitches. Just do your stitches because that actually gives you um, inspiration when you're doing your patch. You know, when you're doing a patch of where, of what's... You can look and say, oh, I'm going to use that in that corner. Oh, I'm going to put one of those in here. Because so, people forget all the stitches. They forget there's dozens and dozens and dozens of stitches that you can do for embroidery. So make yourself a little palette. Or oh, palette. Plate. Palette. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, and, and do all your bits on. As many of the variated stitches as you can and flowers. And then keep that. Um, I would put it on a frame or something. Uh, on a piece of wood, piece of chipboard. So make yourself a little plate, a little plaque of all your bits and pieces. To be honest, these, what you can do, um, if you uh, do it on a PA4 chipboard or an A3 chipboard and then put a padding underneath, once you've done this, you can use it as a wall hanging. It's fantastic and that will pass on from generation to generation. So I do like that idea. Now, in regards to threads... I often use these, which are the crochet threads. And I use that a lot for sewing because it's stronger than cotton. You can get beautiful, and I mean really pretty, colours, but they are silks. And you can tell they're, silk. they're beautiful and soft. But you can also split the threads. You don't need to have them solid like that. You can actually split that if you want smaller. Or, you know to do things thinner and um, they are gorgeous and I love working with my threads so that's the silk thread then you've got the glitter threads like this a little bit harder to work with but they do the job and uh, you get some really nice patterned ones these are two tone three tone and then you've got the plain ones the block color so I like those but obviously 
we are oh i've got these yeah which are the multicolored ones and they're really good when you're making flowers or oh, whatever you want to do berries so you've got those and then you've got your block ones which are these and you can get these in lots of different shades dozens and dozens of shades i buy them in small packs like this i grab them in uh, fairs or you know car boots or whatever obviously oh, multi ones they need taking out but yeah see they're just great and they're cotton threads they need sorting out into the right pack so although i'm going to put this one down as part two um i just wanted to share with you about doing the stitching and the book itself um we'll do a part three tomorrow where i show you how to do this um, and we'll do some more things on the background as well and i'm going to add some lace in that because i like lace on my things <laughs> but also you can use these uh you know like for bordering and things like that so it's like the herringbone but like i've put that there and i think i might want to also add that there and i don't really need to color it i just want the look of it running up the page so these are just trims cotton trims you can use this trim you know it's completely up to you what you do and how you use things and don't forget to put plenty of color in them if you're doing a colored one i'm going to do another one uh, which is uh, all beiges and creams but i'm going to use now people know that the uh, things from tatty came the other day and i have to say i was thrilled with everything that arrived thrilled and I have sat for the last, well, since they came, sorting out all of the um, appliques. I've got a lot more to, uh, to do, but <laughs> I've sorted out so many of each. I just cut up so many of each. And so we've got things like the trims and look at these. These were absolutely beautiful. So I will be putting a little pack together. You know, yeah, there will be little packs put together uh, and sold on the shop. So you've got those in two different sizes. And you'll get so many, you know, one of each or something like that. Beautiful. And then these, and this one, and I have some trims as well. I mean, that I'm going to cut the flowers out. I'll just cut down. You lot can trim them. I'm not doing that. <laughs> no way. My hands were hurting me when I'd finished that. Just lots of different trims. I mean, this. I know that it's just the. Well, up to you what you do with it. You could turn that into a basque <laughs> but to cut a little piece of this out and put it on your project if you're embroidering you know I, there'll be a bit of everything in it and these flowers they're not done like this uh, but for this purpose they're done to take the flowers off so that you'll be able to do that so you'll get a strip and then you'll be able to trim those little flowers off um these little edgings there's all kinds of things in here you know more trim this trim so i'm not wasting any of it at all and um they will be on sale shortly so just give me a chance to finish putting them together uh, but they are in the kits as well the new kits that are coming out i'm only doing six of those kits and you will have heaps in them for you to play around with heaps you know me
So I was looking for some leather bits, uh, faux leather of course, and I've got these. I found a bundle of them. And, yeah, I found a bundle of uh, different leathers for doing the books and there's quite a lot there. So I'm thrilled about that. Like a tan, a uh, cream or beige, a brown, blue, a uh, dark tan, another beige colour, a uh, cream. So yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with that. Yeah, I found these fabrics as well um, in a roll and they, again, it's uh, shiny, quite silky, like a silk fabric. So I thought I'll get them because they'll come in handy when you're doing your patches on your bags and whatnot. Um, sorry about that, my knife there. Um, I managed to find these which I can use. Uh, I was thinking of like fancy gates when I'm doing miniatures. Cut them in half and make them into a fence. Not a gate, well fence and a gate. So I got a couple of packs of those. Right, I'll get back to that. Sorry that was a post. This uh, Bohemian Bliss came. I've already done half uh, the other book that I got. But I had to get another one because I'm doing six kits. So you'll see what I mean about that one. Uh, and it's uh, Bohemian Bliss. Really nice papers. Right, so we'll get back to this now. Um, I got these fabrics, but because they're already cut in the sizes that I need and edged, I was thrilled. So, we've got some blues. They've just got a label you peel off the back. Just peel it off. Um, reds. And these are what are going to go um, into the kits with the other bits and pieces. So that's those. And then these are just gorgeous fabrics. My God, this is beautiful fabric. You've got your label in there so it tells you what it is. But they're just gorgeous. Look, either side you can use. It doesn't matter. In fact, I think some of these are back to front anyway. Just peel the label off. But lovely fabrics. Beautiful colours. Yeah, I'm thrilled with those. And reds and oranges. Browns. Mustard. And this one. Look that with green. Just, I mean, I'm not a green person, but I do like that. And you can have it either way. So, um, what I managed to find are some of these, you know my red jars, the big clear ones with the red lid. I found some uh, that are bigger. So, when I do the fabric kits, uh, which are for the bags, you'll have everything you need in the jar. And it'll come bubble wrapped and, um, you know, wrapped up in brown paper. Uh, it'll have all your fabrics in. And don't forget the colour coordinate. So you, if you're doing a blue bag, you'll only get colours of blue. <laughs> um, and there's a big sheet of that look, which I'm going to do a book with. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, there's another one uh, in cream. So there'll be all different fabrics going in. Let me just put that there with those. I hope it doesn't fall. The other thing I wanted to share with you, I could not believe it when I saw this. You know me for fabrics. I have been looking for this kind of fabric for a very, very long time. And it's quite strong. Beautiful, beautiful colours. Li uh, lilac, purple, beige, mocha, like a dark cream, buttercream, a chocolate. Oh my God. So I would definitely will be putting some of these. Cut the, I'm cutting them out in. You probably get pieces like this because you're only doing patchwork. Um, and there's a lot of materials. I've got dozens of others with flowers on and everything. So all of that. I mean, I've got all of this. Look at this. Just lovely. Lush. Lots of lush. I'm going back for the other colours because they had them in reds pinks, um, oranges and browns, I think it was. So I am definitely going to go back next week and get some more. So keep your eye out for the kits. I want to see how this cuts. Let me just sort this out. This long bit, which I'm going to cut. Yaha. Let's just see. Cut that bit off. See, my pinking shears are old, old. And they don't work as well as they should 
they're quite heavy on my hands actually yeah so i'm just cutting that end bit off right that's fine i mean even that can go in somewhere but there you go yeah cuts nicely so i can't wait i mean i've done most of the kits uh, everything's cut ready it took a long long time to cut all the fabrics because there's loads of it so um i'm going to come back when i've done a kit together and you'll see exactly what you're getting Thanks for watching, take care and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye bye for now.